Hi friends, thanks for joining me today. So we are on week number 11 of my card challenge going through the catalog and I have been looking at page 22 specifically and checking out all of these templates for me to use as my um, card base. So I've been changing it up a little bit. Last week I did a little um, technique, the spotlight technique. This week I am, I've got another little technique, although it's not really a technique, it's just an, an alternative for a card. And um, I'll show you that at the end. And um, we are working on this one right here, which I have numbered as number 11. I believe Stamping Up is calling this number 15 or 16. There's 22. I haven't been going in any kind of order, just kind of randomly choosing one that I happen to like at the time. So that's that. I also have my class schedule available. If you're in Goshen, New York, or any area around Goshen, New York. Maybe you're visiting family for the summer or, um, you know, anytime during the year. So I have it up for the rest of the year and you can scan the QR code and just register on my website. Or you can also click on, is there a link in the description? No, I do not have a link in the description. So just scan this QR code and that'll bring you to my Stamping Up website where you can place an order or you can also register for any of these classes. Classes. I'd love to meet you if I've never met you before. My classes are really fun and um, you know I just ask you to bring your basic supplies which is adhesive, dimensionals, uh, paper trimmer, and scissors. And then I'll provide you with everything else. I'll provide you with the papers, the uh, card bases, everything that you need. Stamps, you get to use my stamps. And if it happens to be during the time where it's a new uh, launch, um, meaning that we've got a new product and you haven't been able to order it yet, then you get to play around with the new product because I like to order some things ahead of time so that I have them for you to play with so that um, you ultimately might want to purchase it. So, um, all right, one more thing. We have the designer series paper sale and that is going through the end of the month and there are 12, uh, 6, 14, 14 different designer series paper that's on sale for 15% off. So it's a great deal and um, it's only in the annual catalog. It does not include the specialty papers or the online exclusives. And if you happen to be a demonstrator watching this, it also does not include the new pre-order items from the new mini catalog. Which brings me to my next point. If you are not working with a demonstrator and you don't have a catalog, but you'd like to receive a catalog, you can um, request it in the description below the video. I just noticed that my board is a little bit out of the window there. So, um, so you can request that in the description below the video, uh, request the catalog and I will send you one directly. Like I said, if you are working with another demonstrator, please don't request the catalog. They are expensive to mail because I do send them out priority mail. And I do ask that you place an order with me at some point. All right, so what do I have in front of me? You're saying, right? So this is one of the paper packs that we're gonna be using today for my card. It's called the Iconic Celebration DSP. I think that's what it's called, let's see. Yep, Iconic Celebrations. It comes in a pack of six by six. There are 48 total sheets and you get um, 12 different designs and they're double-sided. So what you see here is the double-sided part of it. Now these, I love this paper pack simply because it's so versatile. You've got your Christmas, you've got your um, celebration, Valentine's Day, fall, winter. Um, this one over here you can even use for the 4th of July or, you know, any type of celebration. you got birthdays and... Um, did I say fall? I think I did say fall and wintry celebration. So it's very versatile and that's why I got it. It's also got a lot of different colors in here that I really like. So it just kind of spoke to me. Uh, this is available in the online exclusives and only online exclusives. And this is also not part of that sale um, for the designer series paper. But those are, so basically online exclusives Online exclusives, if you're not sure what that is, means that they are only available online. That doesn't mean that if you call in your order, you can't order them, but they you can only view them online basically is what it is. So, all right. And since we're on that, let's go through the stamp sets that I'm using. Again, these are also available only as online exclusives, so you won't find them in a catalog. I'm using Iconic Imagery, the stamps, 
And I am also using a couple of the dies from here. I'm also using the Everyday Greetings stamp set. I love this stamp set. It's so versatile. And you'll see something that I did with this, which I thought was kind of fun. This um, has a coordinating die set, but you don't buy that as a bundle because the dies are the greetings of the season and they actually coordinate. They coordinate with the ones that I have here. And that's why I got them because they're great labels and I love labels, label dies. But these are coordinate, like I said, and you can get it as a bundle. And when you get it as a bundle with the greetings of the seasons, it's an additional 10% off. I opted to just get this stamp set because I love these everyday greetings. You've got anniversary, birthdays, congratulations, uh, kind of Valentine Day, you know, maybe. Thank you. So I really like this set. I think it's very versatile and I will get a lot of use out of it. Um, so for my card base, I'm using Misty Moonlight, and that's basic, you know, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I have a piece of very vanilla for the inside. So this is really just a few supplies here. I mean, seriously, not very much paper used here for the inside. And then I have a piece of the six by six iconic imagery or iconic celebration. I already forgot what it's called. Iconic Celebrations Designer Series Paper. We're going to cut this down a little bit. So according to the diagram that I found online that follows the sketches, my one piece, which is the Designer Series Paper that I chose, should be two and three quarters by four and three quarters. At the end, I'll show you something else that I did with that, which I originally thought would be like really cool, but um, then I came up with this. So hopefully you like this one. All right, so what I wanna do first is I'm gonna cut this down to, uh, let's see, so I want my, this, so I need this to be two and three quarters. I'm actually going to cut this at three inches. Just wanna show a little bit more of it. So we're gonna go three inches, which is half of the designer paper. And then what I'm going to do is, because I wanna get the full candles, uh, I'm gonna cut this down. So this needs to be four and three quarters. I think I figured out if I cut that much off, which is three quarters of an inch. Let's see if that works. If not, we're just gonna go with it. Mm. So I'm gonna cut off three quarters from the bottom and then we'll cut this down to that there. All right, so we're gonna get a little bit of that in there. And to be honest with you, I don't really care for that, so I'm going to cut that off. So this piece really doesn't matter what size you make it. You can make it any size that you want, but I like it that way so that we have all the candles, our whole candles. And we don't have little half candles. But I might save this for the inside. No, I can't save that for the inside because it's too small. So we'll, uh, we'll toss those. Oh gosh, I can't believe I tossed. I tossed out the DSP. I hardly ever do that. All right, so um, the other couple of pieces that I have for the flag, uh, the banner piece, it's one and a quarter inches by two and a quarter. I think I actually ended up cutting this at one and a quarter by three inches, and I will show you why. So when I first saw this design, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool that that little flap in front? Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. This little flap in front actually acts as like a closing mechanism for the card. So that's why I came up with this. So what I'm going to do is this will get glued. I'll just show you really quick. I can pick this up. Underneath the inside very vanilla. So we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna bring it right to the edge. Like so. And then that's going to get glued, so you're not going to see the, the flap on the other side. We'll put this over it, like so. And then the DSP will be here. So I just thought that would be like another, you know, another cool way to show this. And this can be moved up or down, wherever you want. Doesn't matter. Okay? And then that panel will go there with our beautiful birthday wishes sentiment. So this will come together very easily. I did already go ahead and stamp and die cut the candle and also to hold it down, 
because it was too narrow the candle I did a little um, what do you call that a label because I found and you'll see on my sample that the flap just wouldn't stay closed so that's why I did the candle all right anyway too much talking too much talking let us start with stamping the inside I'm using misty moonlight so check this out this has um, stamps I use from everyday greeting um, yeah, I didn't use any from Iconic Imagery. I use the the candles is what comes from the Iconic Imagery. And they are two-step stamping. So you've got your base, your little design, and you've got your flames. And then you can die cut these pieces out individually, which I did here. And I will actually show you the... Um, oh, I do have the flames. Okay. So let's start with... And... Because I had shown this in a shorts video, and I'm not sure if you caught that video. Um, I don't have my first mark. I'm not sure where that landed, where that ended up. But I'm just using uh, Tim Holtz Distress Embossing Ink. It's the same stuff. So it was a little trick that I learned that when you, you know how you're, you, when you use blues and reds mostly, your photopolymer stamps will stain. So I found that if you first stamp it with your, Versamark or any type of embossing ink. Then you use your ink. You stamp your image or sentiment like here. When you clean it, it won't stain. So I'm gonna wipe that off and you'll see. I'm just cleaning it with my Simply Chamois off camera, but you'll see that there's no staining. Now, had I not done that, there probably would have been staining all over my sentiments so the other thing i wanted to show you is i kind of built on this so i took little bits and little words i took sending then we have best wishes on your birthday and i put them all together i lined them up to get that so i thought that looked kind of cool and then i still need this wishes because that's going on the front of our card so i'm going to pick that up with my block I notice I really need to clean these blocks because they're getting cloudy. So let me set that aside for a second. And we're going to stamp our greeting on here. We're going to do birthday wishes. So now birthday and wishes doesn't really fit that well on here, but I'm going to show you something else to do. So whoops, see what I did? I'm telling you what to do and then I forgot to do it, but I think I can probably show you it's not too bad because I got it clean right away. But I forgot to do my Versa mark first and then my ink. So I'm going to come all the way down to the right side and a little bit lower because I want to leave space above this here to stamp wishes. And it's, I mean, not wishes, a birthday. I might have to do this on the other side because it did not stamp the W all the way. Let's see if I can get that. Okay, you got it. Clean that off. And then we'll do birthday. So I'm stamp, I'm inking it up first in the embossing ink and then in the regular ink. And we're gonna come right above and over to the, let's go over here because I'm going to create a flag right about over here. I think that gives us enough room. Isn't that such a pretty font? I thought so. I really like this font. That's the other reason why I bought it because it has a mix of those fonts. All right, so let us do a couple of candles, maybe just one candle on the inside of the card. So again, I've got my candle mounted. We're going to go into the Versa mark. Then we're going to, let's see, where should we put these candles? You know, let's do a couple of candles. We'll do one. Oh, that did not, I am not doing good with stamping today, am I? Seem to be missing the mark. Okay. And then I want to clean that off because I don't want to put the blue ink in my Versa mark. And then we'll do another candle. I'll go up just a little bit. Okay. Turning that off, that aside, and then we'll do the this one. But I need a scrap paper for this because I want to 
stamp off. So we're doing the one generation, and then we're going to stamp right over that just to give it a little bit of a highlight. So we'll clean that off. Do that again. Ursa mark, ink, stamp off. And let's turn this sideways so I see it better. And stamp on. Okay. Now we can close up the misty moonlight. I think I finished with that. And we'll go to, I don't need this because we're using yellow and I did get ink on my finger. So I'm going to just wipe that with my chamois. All right. And let's get our daffodil delight for our candles. Again, we're doing the two step stamping. So we're going to take the solid stamp first and I want to stamp off because I want that to be lighter and then we're going to stamp it right over the candle so it has a nice flame. We'll do the same for the other candle right here and I love these photopolymer stamps for that because it makes it easy to see. And then we'll do the detailed full strength. I'm gonna come here and we'll just go on the inside. And we'll do the same on that second candle. Okay. I'm done with the ink. We can set that aside. We're done with that. We don't need that anymore. All right, I think we can uh, start assembling this card. So, so that I don't forget, I think I'm gonna put this here. I think I'm gonna go right there with that, or thereabouts. So let me get some liquid glue, and I'm going to add a little bit of glue to one side. And then really, I don't have to add glue to the other side because it will be glued down with the very vanilla interior piece. Let me just close this and close this, make sure that we're good. We'll give it a little press, make sure that we're even. Looks good. But you see how it flaps up? So that's why I wanted to create something to hold it down. Oh, and guess what? I forgot to do my flags. So before I start to do anything else, let us do our flags. So I'm just going to add a little bit of seal to the back, especially since I did not cut this first. And I could leave it without the flags, but I like the flags. It just makes it look so much prettier. Um, so I'm going to de-stickify the tape because I don't want it to hold it down. I just want to hold it down so that I can cut the flag. So we're de-stickifying. I think that's good enough. Okay, we're gonna. So what I found is the easiest way to do this is line it up with the end. So then you'll have your little border. So bear with me. We're going to cut in the center. That's right about there. I'm cutting through two layers, so it's a little bit harder. Okay, and then I'm going to come at the corners and cut these off. And cut the other end off. And then this way, by doing it like this, you get a nice border all around. Or if you have flag dies, you can use those nesting flag dies to make this. So now I'm going to pick this up and you'll see that we can layer it right over that. And you've got a nice little border all around. All right, now we can glue this down. 
I feel like lately there's always something that I'm forgetting to do or that I'm jumping ahead of myself. Has that ever happened to you when you're crafting? You kind of jump ahead of yourself and then you lay everything down and you're like, oh my goodness, I didn't do this. Yeah, lately that's been a story of my life. All right, so we're going to center that up right about there. Okay. And then we'll put the inside. And this way you're hiding that flap a little. And, um... Okay. I feel like I have to get a new trimmer blade. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to use my file to take away those little edges. Looks like I missed one. All right, now we can center this on the front and then we'll add the candle with the label or tag. And I'm just gonna center this in the front. Like so. And there's the card. See how that flaps up? So that's why I wanted this piece here. So I'm going to put a dimensional only on the left side. So then this piece will tuck in. So let's close this up. We're done with that. We'll get some mini dimensionals. Maybe two or three. Definitely one. I think I'm going to put another one down here. I don't think I'm going to put one in the center. But let's see what that's like. I just want to hold that down. I think that should be fine. Let's try it out. And then we'll add some bling, some pretty embellishments to the front. Actually, in hindsight, I probably didn't even have to do the flag because you really can't even see it. But see how that holds it down? And then you can pull it open like so. So, okay. Let us add the embellishments. I am going to use my ombre matte decorative dots and we're going to use, let's see, I want to take the darker one, I think. So we'll add one here. Okay, maybe it'll go there. Here, and I want to take this one and add it to Let's add it here. Actually, you know what? Let's put a little one over there. We'll add this one here, here, here. Let's do it here. And then we'll do a little one on the sentiment. Right about, oops, oops. It's not where I want it. There. All right. So there you have the card. It really is very simple. I mean, you know, I'm long-winded lately, so that takes the longest. But there it is. One more thing I want to add is some Wink of Stella to our candle, because, you know, candles need to sparkle, right? So we'll just add a wink, little Wink of Stella to the flame. And as I mentioned in my other video, it kind of wets the ink again. So it's kind of cool. You really can't tell that, can you? it's there trust me so there you go friends that is my card number 11 from our sketch and then you open it up to the inside let's add some wink of stella on the inside i'm really liking this wink of stella just adds a little bit of sparkle and shine not too much just a little okay i'll leave it alone so there is my card the one that we made together and here is my original card and i did this in the horizontal position 
So let me know which one's your favorite, if you like the horizontal or the vertical. And, um, oh, you know, the other thing I did differently for this. Yeah, that was the other thing. I only used, I didn't use a full card base. I used just a panel. So, but, so you have, you can still add a panel to the back with your um, white or very vanilla or some neutral color that you can write your sentiment. But check this out. So this one opens and then it reveals the other side of the designer series paper. And then I added the small um, piece on the inside to write your message. But if you want to write more, you can do so on the back by adding another piece. And then I tucked it in a little leaf. This leaf was cut out from the iconic imagery as well as the candle was also cut out from the dies that coordinated with the iconic imagery stamp set. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, I hope you can um, subscribe. Let me know which is your favorite. Have a great day, friends. Bye-bye.